What's going on and welcome to the Backpacking Podcast. My name is John Kelly. Along with me is the king of backpacking in Kentucky, and that is Jeremiah Stringer. How are you, Jeremiah? I'm doing great, and every bit of that's false. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I don't know about the king, but uh, I definitely love my bluegrass state. Yes, I love this state, man. Like, I've been yeah. living here longer than you have. I know. You love it so much that uh, you would leave the great state of Ohio to live here. Uh, yeah, without any choice. Yeah. <laughs> without any <laughs> choice. <laughs> <laughs> kind of happens when your dad switches jobs when you're in high school, you know, you gotta, you gotta move. So that's true. Don't although, really have a choice there. Dude, my first few years of life were in Kentucky. So it's not like, it's not like I've only lived in Kentucky since I've been an adult or anything. Like I've been living in Kentucky for a long, long time. Yeah. If we could just ease you into bleeding blue, uh, I think everything in the right, you know, everything, I guess you need some yin and yang, but in this, in this case, we need a little bit more. Yen. Well, see, here's the thing, man. Less yang. Football's my sport, and I enjoy winning too much to not stay an Ohio State fan. That cuts deep, man. I'm just, I'm just shooting <laughs> straight with you. Deep. Now, if I was a basketball, if basketball was my sport, <laughs> but here's the thing, here's the thing, and I tell people this all the time: Kentucky and Ohio State rarely play each other in basketball. Uh -huh. Rarely, what and next if year. if they're not playing each other, I always cheer for Kentucky. Always, always. I never root against Kentucky unless they're playing Ohio State. And I always root against them for some reason. That's because you are a hateful person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get started, you want to talk about uh, today's sponsor? Yeah, actually, I would love to talk about our sponsor because I think today's sponsor is a fantastic one. Uh, we actually just had their owner, founder, and chief executive officer on here the other day, Tayson, in one of yeah, our episodes. Very Completely and, down to earth, man. Yep, and that is Outdoor Vitals, Live Ultralight. Um, we have been blessed to have been given the uh, Shadow Light backpacks to check out, and I, I know that uh, I'm a big fan. I really like the backpack. It's very comfortable, um, and there are some things we learned about it that were really cool, like the fabric that it's made out of is a proprietary fabric that they had made for the backpack, which is really cool. Um I love, like, why don't you talk about the anchor system on that backpack a little bit? Because that was something you were really impressed with. Yeah, like one of my favorite features. So for me, comfort is everything. So like uh, when, it, when it comes to backpacking, where the backpack touches your, your shoulders and your back and your hips and all that, if, if that's not all dialed in, I'm not going to use the pack. So right. – if you go back and listen to the episode, we talked to Tayson for a while about the backpack, but I think it was more toward the end. And I was telling him how much I loved their their tension system for the load lifters. And if you're new to backpacking or you're not familiar, you can lean the backpack away from you or towards you up at the top on a lot of backpacks. And their anchor system for that, you can adjust where that happens. And so instead of just pulling a slight curve in it, pulling the, the backpack where it's touching your shoulders, you can actually lean like I, I don't I don't really know what the, the technical terms for it. It's kind of like your center of gravity, sort of. You can like manipulate that by changing the anchor points to make it most comfortable for you. Yeah, it's a fantastic backpack. I'm also a member of the Live Ultralight plan that they have. It's a it's basically like a savings account Adult, at Outdoor Vitals that allows you to save up to buy gear. It's like $10 a month. Uh, that money goes straight in there, and that's yours. It's not one of those things where you put the money in and they take their cut or anything. It's literally $10 sitting there, and when you've saved up the money, you can buy the gear that you want from them. Fantastic uh, setup that they've got with that. And uh, I, I think I told you this before, but they have been killing it on their new gear the last few years. Just yeah, really said killing it. You love their their clothing too. Yeah, I think their clothing is fantastic. All of the dragons wool uh, gear that they have is fantastic. I can't wait to check out the new Ventus hoodie. I think that's what I'm going to use my Live Ultralight money for, is uh -huh. to get the Ventus hoodie when that gets released. Um, heard great things about that. Just an awesome company altogether, and we're really glad to have them uh, sponsor this episode. So, big thank you to Outdoor Vitals for sponsoring this episode. 
Yeah, go to OutdoorVitals.com and check out all the different stuff that they have because uh, it's not just a shadow light. It's, it's not just there's you know, a lot the, there. The hoodie. There's a ton of different stuff, everything from pillows to, you know, they're working on tents. They have a lot going on. So, yeah, huge thank you to Outdoor Vitals for, for the hookup and sponsoring today's episode. Absolutely. Now, let's talk a little bit about gear in this episode. What I want to talk about, you know, fall's getting ready to come, and – a lot of people, they'll backpack in the spring and they'll backpack in the fall because summer's just too hot. Mm -hmm. So fall seems to be one of the biggest times for backpacking every year. And so with this huge season of backpacking getting ready to start in just about a month, uh, let's talk about some gear that we want to get our hands on for this fall's backpacking season. So what we'll do is we'll just take turns. We'll take turns talking about new gear that we want to get our hands on. And, uh, cause I'm curious what you want, man. I'm curious what things you want to get your hands on. So yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about some gear that you want. I'll get started for us. So I, I've been hammock camping for the last while, you know, and I still tent too, but I love the hammock and I've tried a few different hammocks. Um, I tried Jason, <sighs> The first time I ever slept in, well, second time I slept in a hammock. First time was before my first trip, and I was doing that section hike at the AT for four or five days. And I, I slept in one just camping. No underquilt or anything like that. It was cold, even though it was snowing. <laughs> yeah, you get then, cold butt real easy. Then I went to Jason. <laughs> he put me in a 10-foot hammock, and I'm six foot three, so that doesn't work. <laughs> Talk about calf ridge. Yeah, dude, that that's ten foot's too short for me, and I'm five eight, so I can't imagine like what that was like for you. It was a mistake. Maybe it's ten and a half, <laughs> but it's still too short for me. And then Miyagi, Miyagi on the trail, he made me a hammock, and it's double layered, so it's heavier. And I've been using that, the Pride of Kentucky. And uh then we go to Hunter. I borrowed one from him, and it is a monolite, which we talked about in a recent episode, a different type of material, but I think it was only 10 and a half foot, so it's too short too. So I say all that to say one of my number one things that I want in, in the near future is another gathered end hammock and not double layered. Because so I was thinking with the double layered, I could put the pad in there, and then I figured out that the pad is not a good fit for – the way I want to lay in the hammock. Some people love the pad in the hammock. Right. But uh, I like the underquilt. So I want a gathered in 12-foot hammock. That, or I, I could probably get away with 11 and a half if I want to go a little lighter. Non-double yeah. layered. Hunter's is so cool, man. It's got a Dyneema. It's got a ridgeline. And it's got a Dyneema ridgeline organizer. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, and it's mono light, so it's super light. But I think that my my hammock, I almost said dream hammock, but uh, <laughs> that, that's an actual company. So the hammock that I dream of, I could remove the the netting. Mr. Backpacking with Jason, sir, has a hammock. It may be a raven. I can't remember. Yeah, it's anyway, a raven. You can take, yeah, so you can take off the netting and in the wintertime switch it out for like a winter shell. Yeah. And it adds, it adds a lot of warmth, and it has like a little netting area where you know it lets lets oxygen in, and you know keeps it easy to breathe in there. You don't get all it's the all condensation. the condensation. Yeah, so yeah. I want. I don't even know if the Raven, if you can get that long, you you can get it twelve foot. I haven't checked, but that is on my big to get list. Nice, nice. I know, like I mentioned in our last episode that. I'm I'm looking for a hammock here in about 30 pounds. So like Yeah, lose 30 more pounds. Yeah, I want to lose I've lost 70. I want to lose another once I basically when I lose once I've lost 100 pounds, mm. uh I'm going to start looking for something in the monolite um cloud 71 realm that super lightweight 8 9 ounce hammock. That's what I really want to get my hands on. Um cuz that'll then make my entire shelter system less than 2 pounds. With my hand. You know what's, what's really cool about that material is being able to see through it. Yeah. It is so cool. You can look under your tarp, or if you go tarpless, you know, you're you're golden. But 
usually you can only see where the net is above you. So you can lay there and look at the stars and that kind of thing. But uh, being able to just like look right over your under quilt, it's so odd too. Yeah. Well, I know that would only, uh, see, I would only be using that in probably spring through fall down here. Uh, I wouldn't be using that in the wintertime because it's just literally wind's going to come right through it. So it's not going to be very comfortable in the wintertime. Um, but I, I am looking also at possibly getting a Raven myself uh, so that I can put the winter cover on top because that would be really nice. Now, I've slept, I think I've slept in 19 degrees with my hammock as it is now, my Darien. And uh, basically, I just pull my my zero degree quilt over my face. And um, that, what I've learned, what's that? Does that give you condensation inside it? What I've learned with it is I have to do it slowly. Like if I just throw it over and go to sleep, yeah, it, it gets horrible condensation. Um, but what I've learned is if I if I put it over part of the way and then take it off for a little bit and then put it back on and pull it off and let it warm up, mm -hmm. once the quilt actually warms up with the rest of my body, I can pull it over my head and it doesn't condensate at all because it's the temperature's not different. Because condensation only happens when warm hits cold. So I never have trouble with the uh, with the top quilt as long as I let it warm up first. I wonder, you know, with the sleeping bags, yeah, I got some. If people are watching on the YouTube channel, Backpacking Podcast, I have a, a sleeping bag laying behind me, and a lot of them that you get are hooded, you know, or you can get top quilt or whatever and, right. and no hood on it. But it's got like a bungee, like shock cord that you can cinch up the hood. I wonder if, if they want you to put that around and just cinch it up, and then all you got is this. You just got your mouth sticking out. Yeah, a lot of You're people do that. Go. Yeah, I just feel like it's a little bit claustrophobic. <laughs> Honestly, man, um, I would just rather pull the whole thing over my head. Yeah, I mean, just that's just me. I, that's just I've tried that before because I've got I've got regular sleeping bags that have the hoods on them. I I find that to be horribly uncomfortable. I don't mind the hood. I just don't want it cinched. Yeah. I cannot stand if I can feel that shock cord touching my forehead. You know, it's if you put so much tension on it, then you can like it's like pressure. It's like putting a a string of pressure on you. Yeah. And I don't like it's like calf ridge for your face. Yeah. You know, it's no good. Well, I've got a uh, I've actually got a down pillow now too that I use, and I just have that underneath me, and that keeps the back of my head and the side of my head really nice and toasty. So uh -huh. I can just pull the quilt over the top, and I'm feeling good at night. So that's that's gonna be nice. I would like to get a cold weather um, under quilt at some point. What's your coldest uh, rated under quilt that you have? I have a 40 degree from UGQ, but I've used it down to like 27 degrees and was not cold at all. Wow. So, but well, I want I want a zero for like really cold weather. Uh huh. Um, cause I don't want to keep testing that. You know what I mean? But it works. I, I, I'll give UGQ credit, man. They make some of the warmest quilts on the planet. And that, God. that under quilt, man, I have used that four season. Like last year, that's the only under quilt I used the whole year. And it kept me like, I use that instead of my outdoor vitals, 15 degree. And now, how, it kept me cold, plenty warm. How cold did you take that 40 degree down? 27. Okay, so that's the coldest. I mean, I I took I have a zero degree uh, under quilt by UGQ, and I was gonna say on my wish list another piece of gear I'm wanting is like a zero or a ten degree top from UGQ because yeah. it's so warm. I think that they it's where they over I, they don't really overstuff. They like they put put the correct amount of insulation for the rating. Well, and, they and, don't they don't survival rate. They comfort rate. Yeah, so that zero degree in the teens, I was so warm. Oh, yeah, dude. No, no issue. I mean, it was like 17, 19 degrees. And especially like Jason, he used the underquilt <laughs> protector, and then yeah. he got us some for Christmas, and that even adds a little bit more. Oh, that thing's great, man. I used that. See, that was a thing I had a uh, – I guess it was in January – and me and my buddy Josh went out to the gorge to camp out, and uh, I used that 45 degree, and it got down into the 20s overnight, and I just basically had it and the protector. 
And dude, I was I was toasty all night. And uh it actually snowed on us overnight. Like we went to bed and it wasn't there was no snow. Woke uh, up the next morning in a winter wonderland, you know, just snow everywhere. But uh yeah, I would like to get my hands though on a zero. I would like to get my hands on a zero so I could go somewhere a little bit colder and uh and feel pretty protected from that. You know, not to steal your thunder here, because I, I know that you want to talk about shoes too. Yeah. But uh I have been shopping around also for some new footwear. Yeah, man. And I I thought about going back to the ultras and trying I mean they have the Olympus, they have the temps, they have the Lone Peaks, and I haven't heard great things about the new Lone Peaks. You know, I've I know actually a few that Darwin has started using them again. Oh, I've he's, seen that he's been bragging on them pretty hardcore, so I I think it's gonna depend on everybody's foot. Like yeah. the fours, that was my first experience with the ultras and the Lone Peak fours, and I went through two pairs of them. Yeah, and of course, absolutely shredded one whenever I was on the long trail, and the other I still have, and I don't ever wear them. But here's my thing, you know, Jason. I bought some Hoka Speed Goats because he talked highly of them. Yes. And then I, yeah, I I really like those too. I could go with another pair of Speed Goats. But, and Hoka is awesome. Very cushiony. But then I was thinking about going to the Ultras. And then I, I went on this hike with uh, Mark and Crow. And, you know, you weren't, I don't think you were off work. All I could do was day hike. And then Yeah, I came the next day. Me. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of missed, missed each other on that one. But. Wouldn't you know it, everybody had the same shoes, and they were all ultras, like the same ultras that I was checking out. And I was like, I cannot buy the same shoe that Jason got again. I'll never hear the end of it, you know? It's yeah. Just copying, just copying him. Well, I I went to uh, J&H Landmark. You know what J&H Landmark is. It's our local mm -hmm. outfitter here in Lexington. And I'm actually looking at a pair of Danners. I don't even know what that is. They're like an old school brand. But um, I was talking to one of the guys. I'm looking at Speed Goats too. Speed Goats are another one I'm looking at um, because my feet are wider. So I have to have a really wide toe box. It can't, there's no messing around. Like little backstory. I've been using Saucony Mad River TRs for a couple of years now. And I got the newest version of them. And they are way more comfortable than the first ones. Same traction and everything as the first ones. But the problem with these is that the upper is made in such a way where it's like it just lets dirt and sand in. I mean, you can just pour it into the shoe through the shoe. I mean, it's terrible. And when I did a pictured rocks, I got so much sand in my shoes that it wore out one of the toes and actually put a hole in one of my socks. So, wow. and I wear those in gingy socks. So, like, uh -huh. you, there's no lifetime guarantee on those socks. Um, I wish there was, but there's not. And uh, so it wore a hole out in that sock. And and so it's a good thing I had a pair of backups, you know, for the rest of the trip. But the sand was just coming in. It was almost like you could pour it in. And what I did was I turned my, my shoe over and I showed it to Jason. I turned it over and I was pouring the sand out of my shoe, but not through the back of the shoe, through the upper. Like it was <laughs> sprinkling out of the upper. Like it was terrible. And so... If they come out with a new version of these and they have a better upper, I may go back to them, but I think I'm going to move on and try something different this time around because that upper just – Pictured Rocks was rough because of that because there was so much – I don't know if you've ever had so much sand in your shoes that you feel pressure against your toes as you're hiking. No. But I had so much sand in my shoes, it was like pushing against my toes, and I was nervous about getting blisters because of it. So I would have to stop every once in a while and clean my shoes out. So – I don't understand. I, I guess it's a profit thing. I don't know. That's what my mind always jumps to is follow the money. But why do, if shoe companies have a, a really good shoe, so let's say like a Merrill Moab Low. Yeah. I don't think that they've changed those. Maybe Tweaked. once. Tweaked. Yeah. But for some reason, no offense, Ultra, but why does every season you have to have a new point five, and then the next number. It's like this is not an iPhone; it's a shoe. Like, what? Why 
if you have something that works and that's making you money and people aren't complaining about, and then you change it and then all of a sudden it's shredding everybody's Achilles or it's too narrow and it's giving people blisters or whatever the issue, you changed one thing and I, maybe I'm looking at this narrow-mindedly, maybe you know, one shoe works great for some people, but then there's a lot of complaints and it didn't work for other people. And then you, it seems like you just flip flop it. No pun intended. Yeah. It's just like, I think a lot of it too, is just constantly trying to engineer the shoe to be better. I genuinely think they're trying to make the shoes better. Um, but the problem is at least from what, from just my observation, it seems like a lot of shoe companies, um, they don't keep the best parts of the shoe. And then go from there. They a lot of times just do the whole thing over. Like the Lone Peaks are a huge example of that. It seems like with a lot of them in the past, where it, you've you went you know, from the three point fives to the fours. Everybody loved the three point fives. Like everybody loved those things. And then they moved to the fours, and it was just a completely different shoe almost. And everybody was hacked off about it. You know? There's somebody out there yelling right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. And so I hated the three think, point fives. The <laughs> fours were so much better. You're crazy, John. The three point fives are terrible. But I mean, you think about it. One of the biggest complaints about the the three point fives was that the fabric on the sides would rip so quickly and easily, mm. and you would have these shredded shoes. And the tread's not even gone. It's just the the fabric on the sides of them. So why not just reinforce the fabric and keep everything else the same? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like that, that's, that's the stuff. And it's not just, it's not just Altra. We're picking on Altra, I guess, but like Saucony with the mad rivers, they had a really good shoe. And if they would have kept the same upper, just made it a little bit more comfortable, they would have had a great second version of the shoe, but they completely changed the upper. And so now a shoe that I didn't deal with a bunch of stuff inside of my shoe all the time. Now, Whenever I use it, my feet are disgusting when I take them off because they're just covered in dirt. And that's just really annoying. But l let me tell you about these Danners. Okay? okay. Um, I went in, and I always talk to the, to the people at the outfitter and ask them what they're wearing, you know, just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, let me ask you a question. He goes, are you a trail runner? And I looked at him, and I go, have you looked at me? Do I look like a trail <laughs> runner? And he just <laughs> laughed, you know, whatever. But um, I was like, no, no, I just use them for hiking. And he goes, check out the Danners. And I'm like, the Danners? He's like, yeah. And he pulled out a pair and he showed them to me. They're super lightweight, a uh, little more rugged construction. So they're not going to like, you're really going to have to try to tear these things up. Um, but I'm going to give them, I'm, I'm at least going to go back in and try a couple pairs on, walk around in them and see if I like them. But I'm, uh -huh. I'm thinking I'm maybe giving some Danners a try. You are so lucky, man. I mean, just going, I'm just going to go completely against the grain, man. And like, like I'm also one of these people, like if it's super popular, I tend to move away from it. I don't know why. I've just always been that way. I've always been that like, fight the system, rage against the machine, you know, that kind of guy. And so like, I see a brand that everybody else wants, so I'll get something else. That's how I ended up with the Sauconies in the first place. Because everybody else was buying Ultras and Hokas and to Topos. And I was just like, I'm going to go completely different. I'm going to go with something else. Well, I called J&H, and I was like, hey, you know, I, I'm going to be in Lexington. Like, that's a drive for me to, to shop. It's like an hour and a half, isn't it? Yeah, well, an hour, hour and a half, somewhere in there. And I called them before I ever left the house, and I was like, hey, I was going to go shoe shopping today. Um, uh, wanted to try some on. Do y'all have any trail runners? And like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, what about in size 15? No, there's no, I spent an entire day in Lexington just looking for normal shoes. And Lexington has a population of 350,000. Yeah. I mean, it's a, a mid-sized city, right? You would think that somewhere in that city that I could find a size 15 tennis shoe. I went to every shoe store in the Fayette Mall, and there's like 12 shoe stores in there. Mm -hmm. Not a single size 15. Okay, okay well, I, I really like these uh, Adidas Ultra Boost um, or whatever, Na Natural Prime, or what specialty shoes, right? Oh, these are so cool. Can you guys order them in size 15? 
sorry, Adidas doesn't even make a size 15 in that shoe. And I'm like, what the heck? You are so lucky that your feet are normal. <laughs> well, so, I told you about what happened to me on the Shell Toy Trace, right? That they got bigger? Yeah, that I, they grew an entire size. They went from 10 and a halves to 11 and a halves. Um, and 10 and a halves are the most common size shoe in America. So they're always in stock. Doesn't matter where you go, there's always 10 and a halves. And I went from the most common size shoe to one of the most uncommon size shoes. Like usually it's and it's 10 and a half and then it's like 12. So 11 yeah. and 11 and a half, there's not a lot of shoes. And I'm always fighting just to find shoes that I can wear. Now I'm not as bad a situation as you are 15s, but I'm also five foot eight. So I better not be wearing 15s at five foot eight or I'm going to look like a freaking duck walking around. So people make but, fun of me. My clown shoes. Dude, you're <laughs> six three. I bought um, the these Converse. Uh, I think they might have been All Stars. I can't remember. I bought them a long time ago, and I was like, "Oh, these are gonna be so cool!" And it's where they're they're just in an oval shape, and it's so like oblong that it looks exactly like shoes you would be bowling in. <laughs> <laughs> I still I still wear them sometimes with confidence, <laughs> but uh, it I don't know, man. I just it sucks. I need a long hammock. I need big old shoes. I mean, I my top quilt. But you have your whole summer free to go backpacking. That's true. That's true. May, dude, the weather was so nice in May. Yeah. In in early June, I jam packed. I mean, I was out multiple times a week. For multi days, <sighs> yeah, that's true, John. But it's not all sunshine I'm and just, rainbows. I'm just over trying here. to give you some some something to be happy about. Yeah, over here in Giant Land. Yeah, over here in Giant Land. Hey, let's uh, let's talk about some more gear. So we've talked about quilts, we've talked about hammocks, we've talked about shoes. Uh, what mm. other gear are you wanting to get your hands on for this year? I'm looking for a tent, and I have been looking for a tent for a while. The Lunar Solo is what I've been, what I've been using, and it's a trekking pole tent, so non-freestanding, and it's it's great. But if if I'm around condensation, then if my head or feet touch, it's no good. So Devin, he has a podcast too, um, Backpacking Experience, fantastic podcast. Yeah, and, he's way smarter than channel. we are. Oh, dude. He knows he knows everything about backpacking. He literally was teaching a class at a university for backpacking. Yep. So he texted me the other day and he said, "Hey man, found your uh, your tent, your tall person tent." And he, you know, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. You can see, he it's a tarp tent, double rainbow backpacking. Yeah, tent, those are person. nice. So it's two pounds, four and a half ounces, which oh, is completely light. doable. Yeah. I mean, you're you were we were talking about your hammock set up and trying to get it, um, you know, two pounds. Yeah, I would carry two pounds, four ounce, four and a half ounces all day. And, and isn't isn't that freestanding? Yeah, it has poles. Yeah, yeah. Dang, so, dude, that's a I great that's a great weight for a tent. That that right there is. At, I have to research it more and make sure it's exactly what I want. But that is kind of at the top of the list of of things I I need is is a good, especially freestanding tent. Yeah. Like I hopefully at some point can get out west and do some desert backpacking, and I'm really worried that if, if I don't buy a tent, <laughs> you know, before then I'll be in a rush to try to find one. Right. I'll end up having to carry something that I don't want to just because I need a freestanding tent for pitching in the sand out there well and uh we've i mean we're, i'm not going to give away too much but we've got potential plans for us to do that next year but yeah that so, so now's the time to do the heavy research and figure out what would work for me yeah at my height and that thing i think it's like 80 inches long and that's great but uh the main issue you run into is Tents, they don't just go up in a box right there. There's always a curve coming to the middle at the top yeah. for your headroom. And whenever you're on a sleeping pad, you're getting closer and closer to that curve. 
and that that is really limiting how much space. So you go from all of a sudden having all this headroom to now on a two and a half or three inch pad, and your head is so much closer to touching the top of the tent right where it curves. Right. So a tent that's at the top of the list for me for for my wish list and the things that I need to have, you know, the backpacking experience that I want. Ooh, nice little plug there for Devin on that. That was good. I caught that. The backpack experience. That was good. That was good. I try. I try. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, uh, Devin has a fantastic podcast. If if you're tired of listening to our nonsense where we talk about absolutely nothing, definitely go check Devin out because he, he has some great content. But yeah. I'm actually looking at tents, too, right now, man. I'm looking yeah, at tents, on? too. Yeah, I, I'm really uh, – I hate my Fly Creek. Like, I just hate it. Like, I just hate the tent. It's not a bad tent. <laughs> no, it's terrible. I hate it. I, it's and, it. and what it comes down, for me, what it comes down to is that front door. I hate front door tents. Oh, I hate it. They're, they're, they're not in. fun to get in and out of. It's like a doghouse. It's a doghouse. Yeah. I hate it, man. <laughs> and and it's a, it, I mean, I did the entire Shell Toy Trace with it. So I did all 325 miles or whatever it was in. You know the funny thing about the Shell Toy Trace? What's that? Just throwing it out there. I think it's I think it's 350 miles right now. And when I did it, they said 323, but I'm promising you it was not 323 miles. It was definitely more than that because there were so many reroutes that had been done since that mileage had been put down. Uh, I had to have done at least 335 miles, at least. So I, I don't think that the the number was truthful when I was doing it. <laughs> I believe you. All I get to claim is 323. But anyways, I did all of that with the Fly Creek. And, I mean, it, it's a lightweight tent. It weighs about two pounds. But, dude, it sucks. Like, getting in and out of that front door is just not fun to me. Like, because you have to kind of traipse through all of your gear to get in. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. if you're coming in the side and you've got your sleeping bag on the other side of the tent, you don't have to worry about getting crap on your tent, on your sleeping bag. But when you come in through that front door, anything that's on you, you have to, like, you have to be right there where your sleeping bag is. And so to me, it just, it drags in dirt. It's hard to get in and out of, especially when you've hiked. Like I did a 21 mile day and got up the next day. My legs were sore and I didn't want to get out of my tent and getting in and out of my tent that morning was miserable. It's annoying. Yeah. So it is annoying. And it, most of those, uh, most of those front door tents, it, it tapers down at your feet, you know, because you don't need – you're never going to sleep with your head down there. So it tapers <laughs> down, and that, that can shed a lot of weight because they're not using as much fabric, but it also limits your mobility in there. Yeah. Like, it seems like a lot of the side door tents, especially if it has two doors, there's so much extra room on either side that you can put your cell phone and, you know, if you want to throw your backpack in there, you can, or any gear that you don't want getting wet or something like that, getting dew on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I really like the the door on each side. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want something that's got doors on either side. A two person with two vestibules. That's what I want. Yeah, and if Bridget if her and I both go, then it is there's no way I'm taking a tent that doesn't have a yeah. door on either side. It's oh, just yeah. not gonna happen. You don't want somebody crawling over you in the middle of the night because they got to pee or whatever. No, heck no. Well, the other thing I don't like about the Fly Creek is the vestibule is kind of small. So it's yeah. like, because it slants so much, it's almost like a straight up vestibule. Like, So if you can imagine, you've got this little tiny area where you're supposed to be able to like, put all your stuff. Well, it has to lean against your tent. So we got rained on for the first four days on the south end of the trail. And all my gear is soaking wet. The last thing I want to do is have it leaning up against the tent and that wetness and condensation and all that getting in like that front part of my tent. There was always a small puddle at the front of my tent because there was just no way to get around it with how I had to put stuff in there. And that was but, annoying. You know, that tent, I mean, we can complain about it, but it's just not made for what your ideal of what you want is. Right. It's right. not. Or anybody not should right want tent. <laughs> not necessarily i mean some somebody somebody out there is thinking listen to these prudes talking about their tents and their pads i pitch a tarp and it weighs four ounces and i sleep on a piece of polycrow you know what man good going good going you do you bro that's all i gotta it's say a, it's a girl yeah good it's going a girl, girl good going girl yeah. you go you're hardcore 
Way to go. It's not for me. I, I can't even no sleep desire. on one of those, uh, you know, the, what is it, a Z-Lot? Is that the name of those pads that? Yeah, I've got one behind me right now. Yeah, I don't think that I could sleep on those. They're like a quarter of an inch, half an inch thick. You know, that was my plan for doing the Shell Toey. I was going to carry one of those. And I did some uh, some overnights just to kind of figure it out, like figure out my gear and stuff. It took uh, one night, and I was like, I'm not doing that. Heck oh. no, not comfortable, can't sleep. My sides hurt, my shoulders hurt. I'm, t I'm a side sleeper, and that's a worthless pad for a side sleeper, I think. You know, that Nemo Tensor... That, that I bought. The, I bought the Alpine version, so it's higher rated for the winter, but I think it's a little heavier. Yeah. That is, it's so, I don't think the design is anything that's a revelation or anything, but it, it seems like it's different. There's so many pads that have like the horizontal or vertical baffles, and this has like little divots, and mm -hmm. somehow makes it softer, I think. Yeah, I've got the old version of that that was more the vertical baffles. Um, that's, that's what I have. And it, it was before the new one came out that everybody went nuts for. Uh, mine was actually called the Nemo Tensor 20 R. Huh. So, or 20, is that right? Yeah, I think it was 20 R or something like that, but it's a, it's an insulated, uh, sleeping pad and it's rated down to 20 degrees. It didn't do R value yet with them. They changed that on the newer ones. And so, it's vertical baffles. Yeah, it's the vertical baffles. Um, <coughs> uh, Big Agnes, man. they have a they have a sleeping pad. I can't remember the name of it. I think they're usually red and it has oh, vertical back. It's terrible. I I had one of those and it had three leaks within two nights. I heard of people complaining about their arm falling asleep where the the baffles are vertical. Yeah, but I don't know. I never slept on. Well, one. I guess the I guess the Nemo Nemo is is not vertical. It's it's horizontal baffles. Sorry, horizontal oh, okay. baffles. Yeah, yeah, so they're perpendicular to your body. Yeah, yeah. Like a X lot. Yeah, but the 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 Big Agnes uh Axle Air is what it was called. Oh, uh, okay. I hated that pad, man. Like they're actually I got on REI the other day and they're selling them for $35 because nobody wants them anymore. Like the reviews are terrible. Wow. Like and Big Agnes makes great gear. Uh-huh. I mean great gear. They do make great I'm making that's two pieces of their gear I've talked crap about today. <laughs> but but they do make great gear because they do make the copper spur and the tiger wall tents. Great tents, both of them. Um but just that I got the two pieces of gear I don't like of theirs. So um but yeah, so I and I'm definitely looking at a sleeping pad too. Uh Cedar Summit has one right now that's like four inches thick. Wow, how and heavy is that? And it's supposed to be really comfortable. Just a little under two pounds. Under two pounds. That sounds pretty heavy. Most people, I think, well, I don't want to say most people, but a ton of people use the x lot, and usually it's, depending on what size you get, either 16 or 14 or 12 ounces. While we're talking, I'll look it up. How does that sound? Yeah. I I really considered trying the Uber lot, but I I prefer to carry a little extra weight and just get the biggest version of whatever pad I'm buying. Like if they have an extra long, if they have an extra wide um, pad, that's going to be my go-to because I just want the space. The x Light it tapers at the feet. Oh, I'm, I'm way off on the weight. I'm talking about oh. the Ether Light, and it weighs in at one pound, six ounces. One pound six ounces isn't bad at all. No, I think uh -uh. that I think that uh, my tensor alpine is like twenty four ounces, so it's getting up there closing in on two pounds. I That's mean, one pound, pound eight ounces. Yeah, a pound and a half. So, yeah, dude, the it's it's a mummy style, but they have a large one that's seventy eight inches. Um, yeah, like twenty five, but it's four inches thick, man. Why four inches thick? Why not? What do you mean? Why? <laughs> I guess, but at at what point is it diminishing returns? You know, what's a diminishing return on a four inch sleeping pad? Well, if it was three inches and it was still as comfortable and you couldn't feel the ground under you, I mean, even two and a half inches. A lot of those pads are two two and a half inches, and you still can't feel the ground. I don't know, man. I think I'm totally down with a uh, four inch thick pad. Well, I'd I'm say. Just saying. 
if it's four inches thick um, on that pad, then that gives you so much more uh, like grace toward making it softer because you can make it softer without touching the ground. Exactly. And uh, like if the ultimate, let's be honest, the ultimate goal of sleeping in the woods is to feel like you're sleeping at home. Yeah, that's, that's my goal. That's the ultimate goal. And I think having a four inch sleeping pad, dude, come on now. Yeah, I would try it out. What's it called? The Etherlight XT. And it's 20 ounces, you said? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, 22. 22 ounces, okay. One yeah. pound, six ounces. And they have them priced right now? Yeah, it's about 180 bucks for the regular. And then for the large, it's 199 you know, and that sounds like a lot, especially if you uh, j are just dabbling in backpacking. Cause, My under quilts are more expensive than that. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Like, when I first started backpacking, the pads I bought were from Amazon, and I think they were like $55 a piece or something like that. Yeah. And they are basically have no R value, so you're not really insulated, so you can only use them in the summertime, and it's hot in the summertime. So... I sold I sold both of them I think to my father in law because he only goes you know in good weather. But two hundred bucks for a pad I mean that's pretty average I think. Well, it just depends on what you're looking for. Like if you're not wanting anything really all that cushiony, all they okay. There's some other stuff on here. I'm gonna show you something else. They actually have one that's like not the mummy style. Uh huh. They have a uh, they just have a large one. Let me see. And they have a rectangular large. It's two hundred nineteen dollars, two twenty. Oh, the rectangular! You can't go wrong with that, man. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the mummy. If my foot is falling off at night and it's getting cold because it's laying on the ground, I'm like, I'll carry four more ounces so that my foot is comfortable. Yeah, it's six feet seven inches long. That's perfect yeah. for you. Yeah, that would do it. That's perfect. Now it weighs exactly twenty two point two ounces. No, wait. There's a thing pop twenty four point three ounces. Oh, it's a little heavy, but same as my tensor. And how same wide is it? It is twenty five inches wide. Okay, yeah, I would prefer thirty inches wide, but twenty five is pretty typical for a wide. Do they make bed. a thirty inch wide sleeping pad? I think so. Really, I've never seen. I one. think I think that Dan has talked about it. Dan who? <laughs> exactly, Dan who. <laughs> We are talking about Dan Becker, by the way. Good friend of the show. Yeah. Good friend of yeah, ours. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's got a lot of experience with gear. He's tried out a bunch of different stuff. He goes backpacking every once in a while. <laughs> he looks like he's getting into some RVing, too. Dude, that guy is out almost every weekend. Like, seriously. Like, well, when he's you're out more than anybody job, I know. That's your, if your full-time job is camping and backpacking. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? That's your go-to. Be out every weekend or through the week or whenever. <clears throat> yeah, I told you. Well, that's like, that's like when I went up to uh, Michigan in May to do pictured rocks, and he was across the street from me at a gas station when I called him. What are the odds? Like, of course he was out backpacking. He's Dan. That's what he does. And it's just funny that we were like, literally, I live in Kentucky. He lives in Kenosha, and we were in the same place in the UP. The stars sometimes align. They just do, man. They just do. So it was really just cool getting to see him. The brotherly love pulling you together in the universe. It's just there. It's just right there. Um. <laughs> so you have any other stuff that uh, you're shopping around pretty heavy or you're at least dabbling in and looking to see? Yeah, I'm, I'm playing around with sun hoodies a lot. I'm trying different kinds of sun hoodies. You know what I'm talking about? Like the really, really thin fabric. But it keeps you from getting like sunburned and baked when you're outside. Um, just trying different things like that. Uh, like right now, the one I'm using is the Outdoor Research Heal. No, it's not helium. What is it? Uh, uh, ghost jacket. hoodie. I can't remember what it's called now. That's terrible. Why should That's okay. But uh, I'm using one of their the Echo hoodie. That's what it is. The Echo hoodie. I've been using that, and uh, I like it a lot. I've used it on about five trips now. And it's super comfortable, really lightweight. Um, the first time I used it was in May when I was up in Michigan, and I've used it for a bunch of stuff since then. So 
It's pretty cool yeah. though. I really like uh, it. So I use um like a, a fishing shirt. So it's the wick away and I like a long sleeve. It's the, it's the gonna, Columbia one, right? Mm-hmm. Columbia PFG is my go to. And I don't know what the advantage would be for the hoodie, especially if I'm always wearing a hat. It covers and, your neck. Yeah, and then with my neck, I take my buff and I put it in my hat because I already have my buff with me no matter what. Yeah. And then I can wet my buff if it's hot and tuck it into my hat, and it keeps my neck cool and keeps the sun off of it. So I'm, I assume it's just two different ways of doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you think, do I think for me, I like it. Um, because when it's really hot, I don't wear a buff. I have one with me, but I don't wear it. It's just too hot. Yeah. Um, I don't like it around my neck. I don't like, it's just too much, but no, with I don't the hoodie, wear it. what's that? I don't wear it. I like put it. So you just take your buff and you hold it out. Yeah. Put it on the back of your head and then put your hat on. Yeah, I, I know. Put it around it, my neck to me, that's too still hot. too hot. Like, oh, uh, okay. To me, that's just still too hot. And so I like the hoodie because it's so light and it's so thin that um if I'm under if I'm in the green if I'm in the green tunnel, it doesn't matter. You know what sure. I mean? So I don't need to worry about putting it up. But if I know I'm gonna be hiking out in the sun a lot, I can just pull that hood up real quick. And it's not gonna add much heat to my neck or to my head or anything. And uh it's really airy, which is nice. So any kind of breeze you're gonna feel and it's gonna feel fantastic. So um I've just kind of become a big fan of those, just uh, trying them out this year. I've got a couple different ones I've been using, but I think I like the Echo one the best so far. I would like to try out some of those, uh, like the same style as the Melanzana, like those hoodies. Yeah. I would I would like to try out – it doesn't have to be a Melanzana. I don't really care about the name. I just want to try out some different ones and because my go-to for years has been the mid-layer – is like a pullover quarter zip fleece. Right. And I have a few of them. And I like them, but I'm always up for trying different stuff. And I I saw um, Miyagi. He had a Melanzana. Lance mm -hmm. uh, from Outland. He had Melanzana. And then Miyagi's daughter, I guess he bought her one too. It's like a raffle or something. Yeah. And I would try something... I know you're big on the uh, app gear, I think it is. No, I've never had like one. That. I've always wanted one, but every time oh. I go to order one, they're not in stock. I've actually got one coming in from Senshi Designs. Um, I think it's called the Lark Hoodie, and it's that same style, It's but it's really airy. So it's like you could wear it in the summer and be comfortable kind of thing. Um, but it's a different kind of fabric, too. So I'm excited about what that comes in. I ordered it a couple months ago, and it should be in. It might even come in, in the next couple weeks, I hope. Cause I'd really like to have it before it gets too cool. You know, you know what else is uh, at the top of my list? For What's here? that? This is something that I think that most people don't think about because shovel? most people aren't taking it. <laughs> no, a full size shovel, <laughs> full size shovel, <laughs> like a giant spade. <laughs> now this is a uh, camera equipment. Yeah. I'm wanting a new lens for my camera, something that will be wider. And right now, most people don't care about, like, the AV equipment and stuff, you know. Yeah. They just, if they watch your videos, they're watching for in information or entertainment. But uh, I want something that is a wider lens so you can see more of my face, more of the background, and just up the, the quality of stuff on my YouTube channel. And for me, like, backpacking, that goes right, right along with it because every time I'm going – I'm taking either my cell phone, which I can film some stuff on, or if I'm wanting to do a full pledge video for the trip, I always have my camera. Right. So that's a big purchase. For those, for those of you that uh, most people just take pictures with their iPhone or whatever because they are absolutely fantastic, especially. Oh, my gosh. You know, they're so good now. Yeah. Yeah. And for us that are taking these bulky cameras or whatever, like a new lens – can be anywhere from free, somebody's giving it to you, to thousands of dollars. Thousands so, of dollars, yeah. The one I'm looking at, I mean, they're like four or $500 used. Right. So that's more than any quilt I've bought or 
hammock or that kind of thing, you know, you could get a super, super nice tent for four, 400 bucks. Right. Or you could, you know, some tents are like a grand though too. Yeah. So, but that's a big purchase. <coughs> well, I'm actually looking at new cameras because I want to get a lighter camera because my camera, you know, it's a, it's a full size Canon 80D EOS 80D camera. That's just full size. It's huge. It weighs a lot. Um, my lens is a big lens. It's a great lens. You know, I'm using it right now. This is the camera I'm using right now. Um, but it's it's just so big. And so I'm looking at getting a camera that weighs a little bit less, but is full frame for people that care about photography and videography. It just means you can get more picture in the picture. Um, and I, I want to get a lens that weighs a lot less as well. And I've got my eye on a system. I just got to save up about 2500 bucks to make it all happen. So that's yeah, a lot of so money. It's so expensive. Yeah, it's it's big time purchases. It's so expensive, and you're talking about adding pounds to your base weight. <laughs> well, I'm looking at taking pounds off of my base weight. That's true, but taking so, the camera at all, like yeah, yeah. Even even if I go like my first camera was just a little point and shoot with a flip up screen, little yeah. Sony, and even if it's a quarter of a pound or half a pound, you're still adding weight that most people don't take yeah but you know like a lot of people take cameras even if they're not doing the youtube thing like a lot of people just really yeah. like to get good pictures of wildlife of trees of the of uh, landscapes um backpacking cameras and backpacking have gone together for years and yeah. there's a lot of people that just want to have a good camera to take with them because they want to have memories of these trips they've gone on there's a lot of people that video their trips but never put them online for anybody they just want to have memories of of the trips that they're on so there's a lot of people that buy camera gear even that aren't doing the the youtube vlogging whatever thing they're just they just want to have some really cool pictures and that's for them that's worth the wait yeah and especially like day hiking too yeah you see a ton of people with a camera around their neck because like exactly what you said they're going out there to capture those memories and moments yep yeah, yep. that's true. So I, that's, a, I, that's a lot of people will get on like YouTubers and stuff when we talk about camera gear as being part of our weight, but you'd be surprised how many backpackers go out with cameras because uh, I've got a friend, he only goes backpacking once or twice a year, but he always takes a full size camera and like two or three lenses. Yeah, I have a friend that uh, he has a YouTube channel, but doesn't do a whole lot of stuff for backpacking. But he'll take two cameras, yeah, and and multiple lenses, and I'm talking like this is the same backpacking trip I'm doing, so we're we're having to walk the same steps, and he's got the double crossbody strap cameras, the lenses, you know, in a separate compartment, and uh, he does like black and white photography that you develop. You know, and yeah. then he has a digital camera too. So he has the best of, I guess, both worlds. But yeah, I don't know if I could uh, justify taking an, even an extra lens. You know, maybe if I was doing some kind of production thing, but two cameras, oh, but to each their own. If you're willing to carry the weight, you can take whatever you want. We jokingly talk about hike your own hike, but I mean, really, it is. It's do what you're going to do. Like the, the, the one thing I hate about, some people when it comes to backpacking is they think there's this universal rule of you have to have a base weight of this or you have to have your weight low to do backpacking and truth is that's not true like if if you're somebody who like taking doing photography is a huge part of your backpacking then take the camera you want to take take the lenses you want to take and have a good time you know and and enjoy it like backpacking is so personal you know, even the gear we've talked about today, whether it's the shoes or it's the tents or the quilts or hammocks or whatever, um, it's very personal. You know, pick what you want. Like, just because I say I don't like something doesn't mean it's not good. It just means I don't want it, you know? <laughs> and, and so, so like, if anything, if, if you learned anything from today's episode, understand that find gear that works best for you and go with it. Don't Don't yeah. worry about what us talking heads say on uh, YouTube or podcasts or anything. We're here for, as a resource, but we are not the end-all be-all of everything backpacking. That's a great way to end it, man. There it is, man. Took it so super serious at the end. <laughs> That's okay. It's all true. Super hike serious. Hike. <laughs> well, 
Well, let's say a big thank you to Outdoor Vitals for being our sponsor for today's episode. Again, we appreciate you guys. Uh, you're one of our earliest uh, supporters of the podcast, and we really appreciate you guys. Yes, de definitely check out Outdoor Vitals, all their different gear and clothing. Absolutely. Well, with that said, thanks for listening. We appreciate you guys more than you ever know. We'll talk to you next time. Adios, folks.